This is the story of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School hockey team. It's a story of resilience, of community, of dedication. It begins on Valentine's Day, 2018. It started like any other day, and I say that, you know, actually started with chaos. You know, running a little late, rushing the kids out the door, and, and, and the horror of that day, and it was Valentine's Day, is I can't remember if I said to my kids as they were going out the door, especially my daughter, if I said the words, I love you. The day started as a normal day, normal day school. I was in astronomy class, so my group was actually just walking back into class as the fire alarm went off. As I'm walking to my spot for the fire drill, I hear my teacher scream, everyone get back in class. Quickly, I realize something's not right because people are running towards me. 911, what is your emergency? I just got a call from Douglas High School. Um, a female on the line advised they believe there's a shooter at the school. I had an alert from, uh, from the school uh, that the school was on lockdown, but it didn't say why. It was when we were waiting in the field and we heard the shots. And we heard too many of them to be a drill when I realized that it was what it was. Uh, we weren't sure where the shooting was, so uh, obviously there was a little bit of panic. You had no idea where the shots were coming from. You had no idea if the person behind you could have been him. You don't know if the guy could have been on top of the building. You don't know anything. You just got to run for your life. I get a phone call from my son. He goes, there's a shooter in my school, and I'm running right now. And he goes, and I can't find Jamie. As soon as he said that, I knew he wasn't kidding, because he watched his sister like a hawk. In a time like that, you want to be with your wife and your kids. You want to try to protect them and comfort them as much as you can. And, and knowing that uh, my son was on lockdown inside, inside the school uh, and I couldn't be there for him made it that much harder. One of my very best friends is a Coral Springs police officer. Now I'm in constant touch with him. I'm like, any sign of Jamie? And all of a sudden he broke down crying. And he's like, she's gone. Jamie was the first identified victim. 17 people who left for school that morning to learn, to teach, to coach, never came home. I just uh, want to start off by saying that um, I live in Parkland. I've been living there for the last 12 years. My wife was born and raised in that area. My kids go to school in Parkland. When I'm done playing hockey, I want to spend the rest of my life in Parkland. No child should ever have to go through that. It's enough. Enough is enough. We got to take action. The boys on the Stoneman Douglas hockey team faced a difficult decision. At a time when sport couldn't have seemed less relevant, the state championship was just days away. They pretty much to a person decided that yes, we were gonna go. And one of the things we talked about is obviously now you represent a lot more than just yourselves and the team, we're representing the entire community. We all just realized that it was gonna be our biggest stress reliever to be able to play the sport that we love. It brings happiness when we're happy, it brings happiness when we're sad. It's a place for them to channel their emotions. Probably every other waking moment, have the opportunity to think about what transpired and the friends that they lost and their grief. But when they're on the ice, they're a team and they're playing for each other. My son has been um, able to get through this process because they've just kept him going. They've kept him busy. Hockey has lifted him. It's, listen, my wife and I are, we're in a pretty broken place, but it's lifted us too. It was, it was more than hockey. We, we needed to do this for our community. And we knew if we did win, that it would have brought some joy back home.
after losing the first three games, they stormed back and won the Florida State Championship, fulfilling not just the season's goal, but a much greater quest. This wasn't for us, this was for the 17 victims. We played for them. 17 players on the Stoneman Douglas hockey team, 17 victims at their high school less than two weeks before. The symbolism was impossible to ignore. For us, it was felt like that was our way of memorializing them. Everyone was, that was there was proud that we did that, and we definitely feel like we did the right thing. I think we all at that moment just looked at each other and said, this is big. We shined a light on such a dark moment. Uh, and, you know, we all said, I don't know what's going to be next, but we better be prepared for this. Winning the Florida State Championship qualified them for the national championship a month later in Minnesota. One of the things we had talked about was coming to national, so that was the goal for our season. But we never really said what we planned to do once we were here. Many of the players on the team had more than a national championship on their minds. The March for Our Lives, organized by Stoneman Douglas students, was happening the same weekend. One of more than 800 marches that popped up around the world was to be held at the Minnesota State Capitol in St. Paul. There were several boys on the team that feel so strongly about uh, their school and the cause that they were torn and might not have come to play hockey knowing that their school and what transpired was bigger than hockey at that moment. When it feels like the end of time Know that as the grains fall You'll be playing on It was important to be there because my school started this, our community started this. Never again will we have our friends labeled lost when we know where they actually are. Never again should anyone have to attend 17 funerals in one week. Never again will a community be brought together by such a tragic event. Never again. That march was a tipping point. It was way bigger than people had predicted. The messages were unbelievable. These kids mean business. That afternoon, the team set their eyes on one final goal. After losing their first two games at the national championship, they had one last chance to do something memorable. One of the things I mentioned to the boys, I don't know if they all knew this, the Douglas organization has been a couple times to nationals and uh, has not won a game. So that was kind of the goal at the beginning of this game was, let's do what we can to, to bring that win home and uh, get, a, get, get a little history for ourselves. When I went to OT, I left everything on the ice. It was just the perfect ending to my high school career. Being able to win a game at Nationals the first time for the school, have it being in overtime and have it being one of my best friends who scored the goal. It just makes this story even better. It's just gonna be a great story to tell. I'm gonna enjoy telling it. It sunk in because that's my last memory. Like, a lot of my last memory is seeing everyone jump and have fun and get an OT win in Nationals. It's a great last memory. It felt like we won the National Championship. Like, even though we lost the other games, we were all smiling the whole time. We were just, just happy kids. To do what they did is unbelievable, and, and it is a, as a team, I you know, as a Florida Panthers organization, we were inspired by them, and uh, you know, they say it's the other way around, but I think we drew more inspiration from them 
than they did from us. These kids, I see them all living in their phones. I didn't think they knew how to communicate. I was wrong, you know, I was really wrong. Not only are they able to communicate, they're fierce, they're well-spoken, they know what they want, they're not afraid to say it, and the phone that I was worried about turned into their weapon. These tough hockey boys have been loaded with compassion and empathy and love, you know? And because of them, you can be optimistic.